Fox News' Chris Wallace is continuing his trend of actually asking some tough questions of Republican lawmakers. This was something that was pretty pronounced during the Trump administration. And now during an interview with Senator Tom Cotton, Wallace decided to call him out on a pretty clear lie. Let's hear how it went down. Here is one of your other complaints about the, the COVID relief bill. Take a look, sir. Look how crazy some of the Democratic ideas are. I mean, they had a chance on Saturday morning to stop checks from going to prisoners, from going to the Boston bomber, for instance. And on that vote, they declined. Every single Democrat wanted to continue the practice of sending checks to prisoners. But Senator, under two previous COVID relief bills that you supported and voted for and that President Trump signed, Prisoners also got checks in those bills. Well, Chris, that was obviously Congress, never Congress's intent. The Trump administration, IRS, and Treasury Department did not send checks to prisoners. Liberal advocacy groups sued to try to force that. A liberal judge said they had to. Last month was the or this month was the first time we ever had a simple up or down vote on whether those checks should go to prisoners. And the simple fact is that every Democrat voted to keep sending checks to prisoners. I don't think that's a smart idea. I suspect most Americans don't either. One of the next big pieces of legislation that. So we included that last part because Chris Wallace did not fact check Senator Cotton, although I'm giving him credit for you know at least trying to ask a difficult question. He didn't ask a follow up that would have been important in this context. But to be absolutely clear, both relief bills that passed under the Trump administration indicated that prisoners could in fact qualify for those coronavirus relief checks. And in both cases, you had Republicans like Senator Cotton voting in favor of it. I have a little more detail into how that all went down in just a minute. But Jenk, what do you make of this? Like, What do you make of Chris Wallace continuing this trend? Because it's not what Chris Wallace was known for prior to the Trump administration. Yeah, I'm sure he'd dispute that, but I think overall you're right. I think it's, I don't think it's just Chris Wallace. I think it's um, some portion of the mainstream media. And I hope they don't forget that instinct of challenging people in power. That That's a muscle that they developed under Trump. Because Trump is part of the elite, but he's not part of the establishment. Uh, the establishment mm. is a machine built to, to help everyone in the elites. Whereas Trump just wanted to help himself. So the establishment hated him for it. And so they told the media, hey, you should, this is a rare situation where you should actually do your job and challenge the powerful. So they did it and they've forgotten that they weren't supposed to do it. They, they will eventually remember and they're beginning to remember. But we're in this pocket here where they actually are challenging Biden a little bit more and Republican senators more. So uh, I'll take it and I hope that that bubble expands rather than shrinks, although I'm afraid that it's gonna shrink. And in this particular case, Cotton as usual is lying. Now earlier in the program, we told you guys about how the Biden administration was also lying about immigration. So we're here to do the news. We're gonna tell you what's true or not true and we're gonna back it up with numbers and facts. So uh, in, in this particular case, Tom Cotton says, well, Congress did not intend to vote to give the prisoners checks. Well, Senator Cotton, you had a funny way of showing that because you voted to give the prisoners checks twice under Trump. And you never objected. You never went on Fox News saying, oh, can you believe Trump is sending checks to the Boston bomber? What a monster Trump is. No, he's like, bravo, bravo, absolutely. I voted 100% with Trump. Let's go with those prisoners' checks, right? Then Biden gets in office. You're like, oh, I am shocked and chagrined. To find out that prisoners are getting checks just like I voted for. Okay, so please spare us your totally 100% phony outrage. And this is not an issue where there's nuance. Tom Cotton is a systematic liar. He lies in the same exact way that Trump does, except he doesn't have as many insults, he doesn't have as much flair. He's a boring liar. So in other appearances, he also lied about how Joe Biden's now giving free health care to illegal immigrants, and he's promised it to everyone who's gonna come. Just an outrageous lie, not, that not remotely true, right? So that's who Tom Cotton is.
So I wanna give you guys specifics um, so you know exactly how the legislation went down under the Trump administration and how it's ridiculous for Cotton to make a big deal about this under the Biden administration. So again, neither the bill Trump signed with Cotton support in March of last year, obviously, nor the bill Trump signed with Cotton support in December of 2020 contained any language prohibiting prisoners from getting relief funding. But after the first stimulus bill passed, Last March, Republicans were like, "Oh, but we forgot to include the provision that would ban prisoners from getting any of this relief. And so they tried to get the IRS to belatedly prevent prisoners from qualifying for those checks. But then a federal judge comes in. So the Trump era initial, I'm sorry, the Trump era IRS did try belatedly to prevent prisoners from getting the money in the first bill. But tax law experts across the political spectrum said, the IRS had no authority to do this given the text of the law and how it did not exclude prisoners. After prisoners filed a class action lawsuit, a federal judge ruled in October that the government had to let prisoners access the cash. So when it came to the second relief bill that passed in December of 2020, the IRS didn't even try it. The Trump administration didn't even try to include that provision. And then you have the third relief bill under the Biden administration has has the same provisions in it in regard to prisoners. And all of a sudden Republicans are making a big deal about it. But it's all lies, it's all in the way that they're framing it. They were very supportive of Trump's legislation. They're just being political about what's happening now. And then one final thing I wanna mention, Jenk, because it's important. After the 2008 economic collapse, you can recall that the Obama administration passed a relief bill. Obviously, it wasn't enough. It only furthered inequality in America. However, that legislation ensured that prisoners would not get that relief money at all, right? And the reason why I'm bringing that up is, did Republicans ever give Obama credit for that? I'm not saying I'm not saying that I would give credit to Obama for that. I'm just saying that Democrats pandering. To disingenuous right wingers never works out well. So don't do it. Don't do yeah. it. Don't ever do it. Don't do it in immigration policy. Don't do it in relief policy. These people are not your friends. They're never gonna give you credit. In fact, even if you give them exactly what they want, they'll turn around and literally lie about it on national television. Yeah, I, I want to add one more thing too. Conservatives argue in court all the time as their legal principle, plain reading. Plain reading of the statute. We don't want activist judges. The Congress wrote it and they intended what they wrote. That's it, right? That is a bedrock of conservative judicial theory. Now they're going, yeah, I mean, we wrote it and we all voted on it, but some of us kind of didn't mean it. And now we'd like to blame Biden. And even earlier, like, oh, our bad. Basically, that's going into court and saying, sorry, we're incompetent and lazy. So we didn't really do our job right. And some of us would like to change our opinion after we voted yes on the bill. And the courts basically told them, mm, that's not how it works. You guys read the bill, then you vote on the bill, and then the bill's the law. You don't get to say some of us didn't mean it later, okay? And is there a right way to object to a provision in a bill or to the whole bill while still voting for it? Yes. And the person who did the best job of that, in my opinion, is Bernie Sanders in the 94 crime bill. Where he said, look, I am I have to vote for this bill because it's got the Violence Against Women Act. And, it, and, I, and I want that so much and it's so important that I'm gonna vote yes. But I'm gonna give a stem winder of a speech here where I explain to you how awful the rest of this bill is. And that we should not do any of the other garbage parts of this bill, right? And so that's where you go, okay, well, that guy was clear on what he wanted to vote yes on and what he didn't, right? Tom Cotton going on TV after Biden gets into office going, oh, well, yeah, remember, we were lazy and stupid before and we didn't read the bill and that's why I voted for it. But you know, now I want to blame Biden for the thing I voted on. So can I get credit for that? And so we're now left in a, in a, dis, in a media so in disre, disrepair in this country that we're giving Chris Wallace credit for saying, no, you don't get credit for that, <laughs> which is super exactly. obvious. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.